Hi there. My name is Alu Sanbari and welcome to this uh, quick session on economics. We're going to focus on um, solving data response questions in economics for WASC. There's many students who have been asking me for uh, some videos on data response questions. So here we go. Um, it's raining so and also I'm home so if you're hearing a bit of noise uh, please excuse that. So let's start by basically yeah so this question focuses on uh, market structures specifically on equilibrium profits and costs in competitive markets we'll do a quick overview of markets and competitive markets and then we'll uh, dive into the problem straight away okay so first of all uh, what is a market right say market structures so in this topic usually um, you discuss like what a market is, types of markets, and within those who deal specifically uh, like uh, with the some uh, different types of markets within those um, groups. So for example, well actually let's start from the beginning. Um, a market is simply where you have buyers and sellers coming together. Right, give them this, and they give you the money. Right, so wherever you have this uh, situ uh, a situation like this, that's a market. Right, so a market is not just like when your mother or somebody sends you to go to the market, to a marketplace, to um, a physical marketplace to buy something. Uh, a market can even be online, especially nowadays. Um, if, if you're considering uh, markets in terms of the products that are s sold in them um, so for example a stock market let's just uh, if you go to Yahoo Finance for example this was a, a portfolio that I created I was on a, a financial analyst course so I created this so you have different index funds and you can attach um, for so you have S&P 500 is really popular Dow Jones Nasdaq um, Russell 2000 crude oil gold so here um, investors uh, people who have money they come and buy shares in company ownership in companies right so you can buy and sell shares so this is so it's, it's, it's a market because it's bringing together people who want to buy shares with uh, people who own them and want to sell them so you can see, you can come here and observe this for Tesla, this is Caterpillar and different other companies. Oracle, the um, software company. Yeah, so you have, so the market doesn't necessarily need to be a physical market. Now let's go back to our um, problem here. So yeah, so you can consider markets, uh, so types of markets in three main groups. Um, and these groups, um, really the way we consider markets either we consider the product that's sold in the market right or we can consider uh, the channel of distribution it's called this for distribution uh, or we consider the price which is usually where we spend a lot of time especially where we have these sorts of questions so we are considering the product so for example what I mentioned you have stock exchanges so stock exchange um, you can also have um, for example labor market labor market here employers and employees or would-be employees come together to exchange uh, goods and services right so so we can consider um, yeah, markets according to the product that's sold in them. We can consider markets according to the channel of distribution. Often you can see here they say uh, wholesale market, uh, retail market. Those are the main types in there. And then when we consider um, price, there's two main groups. And, with, and um, within these groups, we have uh, subgroups. So you have perfect markets and imperfect markets imperfect markets right so in perfect markets the buyers or the sellers cannot influence the price that's a key thing you need to know right um, 
and then in imperfect uh, markets however um, buyers and or sellers can influence the price of goods and services okay so for example you have a uh, perfect competition so the one we're studying here is an example of a perfect market where and the characteristics are we have um, there's many buyers and sellers it's easy to enter or exit the market um, in imperfect market um, however for example you have um, monopoly right a monopolistic competition so in a monopoly for example you have just one seller of a product right so they can be able to influence the price of goods and services um, yeah so you have monopolies duopolies oligopolies where you have just like a few key sellers who are controlling uh, the market so that's for the types of markets now let's look at uh, this problem in more detail let me just clean this up a little bit and then we can study this um, chat and see how we can go about solving the problem okay so the, di where the question says the diagram represents the equilibrium position of a farm in a perfectly competitive industry All right so an industry is just a group of um, farms businesses selling similar products so we are asked to study it carefully and then we answer the questions right. so we can see here there's um, three curves and we have some information about cost of pr or price on the um, vertical axis and then we have some we have we have values on the levels of output right and then we have the marginal cost curve right and the average total cost curve and then finally we have the average revenue or marginal revenue curves now keep in mind first of all I uh, hopefully you would have some idea we might do some videos later going deeper into this concept so the marginal cost curve so marginal cost is really just the um, the cost of producing one more unit so let's just say plus one unit of output right that's what the marginal cost is um, and then you we have the average cost is just of course the total cost right maybe it costs you to produce maybe 10 eggs per week divided by the yeah the total cost and then divided by those number of units it gives you the average total cost keep that in mind okay um, of course the average revenue is just the revenue per unit so for example if you sell uh, 100 leons and then you sell you sold 10 units so you basically your average revenue so your AR is equal to um, 10 leons so you sold each of them 10 10 leons right so that's the average revenue so in the case of a perfectly competitive market the average revenue which is the price really is equal to the marginal revenue so the um, the revenue you gain from selling an extra unit um, is equal to the average price right okay so there's a bunch of things there's uh, properties and relationships between these curves that are actually been questioned that have been asked in the question so let's just go and um, dig deeper and answer these questions well keep in mind we have the cost or price on the y-axis and the output related to the various uh, cost surprises on the horizontal axis right we see there is a point where the marginal cost curve and the average total cost they meet together that's really important the fact that this curve is also horizontal is also very useful in terms of um, this question right so we'll go over into the next part and actually answer solve this problem Thank you.